Hi, welcome back. In today's episode, we will look at an introduction to build systems and Gradle. What is a build system? You can think of build systems as principled ways to turn source code into something that your computer can execute. To be more semantic, we can define a build system as a software that automates the process of getting some kind of artifact. This can either be an executable binary or a library from the source code. We might want to ask ourselves, why do we have build systems? A build system serves several purposes. One, configuration of your build for artifact generation. This can be in the form of APKs, JAR files. A build system can also allow you to unify different builds and logic and reuse them in various projects. We can also use a build system for dependency management, assuming you have a library that you depend on inside your project. You can use a build system to manage that dependency. Testing and verification can also be done through build systems. Another way we use build systems is to perform what we call incremental builds. Some examples of build systems include Gradle. Two, we have Apache Ant. We also have Maven. From the definition, build systems seem to work in a way that allows them to transform code from the original source through a series of steps. This is dependent on the language, framework, or even operating system into an executable that your computer would understand. These steps look as follows. Firstly, we'd have your source code written in either Kotlin, Java, or any programming language that your build system is upon. After that, it will be converted into an intermediate representation. This intermediate representation is now what is converted into an executable. You could have a Java archive or an Android application package. Let us look at a very popular build system known as Maven. Maven has been the bread and butter of the JVM world. It's been very popular for a very long time. It uses the declarative approach for dependency management. One thing with Maven, it is very heavy on conventions, meaning a lot of things that you might want to do, a lot of tasks that you might want to achieve with your build system are already defined. And you simply need to describe how you want them to do. However, with such a convention-based system, it means there is no room to maneuver with custom functionality or tasks that you can do. In order for us to integrate custom functionality within our build systems, we'll have to use custom plugins with Maven. Maven allows for seamless sharing and use of JVM dependencies. It is one of its primary functionalities in use to date. The dependencies are usually defined in a system of coordinates. This system of coordinates usually includes the group ID, artifact ID, and the version. This is an example of how a Maven build file looks like. We have a project definition, which defines different namespaces, schema locations, the model version of that specific build file, the group ID, the artifact ID, and the version of the specific project. You might wonder, these are good things being said about Maven. However, there are several issues that arise with Maven. One, you couldn't be able to define custom logic in a simplistic manner. It is very hard to implement custom build logic within your Maven scripts without having a custom plugin. Maven builds are defined using XML files. XML in itself has lost a lot of popularity in recent times. Right now, people prefer using much more functional languages to be able to define build logic. Maven also lacks support for incremental builds. The incremental build model is a method in software development where products are designed, implemented, and tested in an incremental manner. A little more is always added as we continue until the product is finally finished. Maven doesn't support such a model. Well, 
Let's get the elephant out of the room. Gredo is a build system that combines both imperative and declarative ways for describing builds. It uses general purpose programming languages for configuration. You can have simple builds defined declaratively and complex builds done in an imperative manner. Gradle uses a coordinate based approach as well for dependency management, similar to Maven. You can have the group ID followed by the artifact ID followed by the version of the dependency. Due to its versatility and extensibility, Gradle can be used in areas outside of the JVM. This include JavaScript, C++, among others. A Gradle project is responsible for building your program stored in a folder. This folder usually has several files. We have the Gradle W or the Gradle W dot batch file together with the Gradle and the Gradle wrapper subdirectories. This usually store a local copy of a specific Gradle build system version and they ensure that your project's build are self-contained. This makes your builds run independently of the operating system. The gradle.properties file usually stores key value pairs of configuration parameters for your build. You might want to define things like Kotlin versions, Compose version, library version inside your gradle.properties file. Settings.gradle file, which sometimes can be settings.gradle.kts if you're using Kotlin, is used to configure the build system itself. Finally, the build.gradle file or the build.gradle.kts script is the main file which describes how your Gradle project should be built. It is also important to know that Gradle can use either Groovy or Kotlin. Since 2023, Gradle has been Kotlin first. In order to set up a Gradle project, you will need to fill out the build.gradle file. This is where all the configurations for that exact build happen. You could have things like group names, version names. You could define the repositories where you can find specific dependencies. You can also define plugins within Gradle. You can define the repositories where external libraries can be found using the repositories block. You can either use predefined repositories such as Maven, Maven Central, Google, among others. You could also have custom definitions of repositories of your own. Please remember, I have placed a username and a password inside my Gradle configuration here, but you should never do that. Any credentials or secrets that you want to use within your Gradle projects must be defined in the local.properties file or use some environment variable of some sort. You can define external libraries that you need using the dependencies block. Most of the time, if you've been writing Kotlin projects, you have added a library using the implementation function, then provide the library itself, as shown in our example here. You can also mark a dependency as being required for only a specific part of the build or even execution process. You can have a dependency marked as compilation only, this would mean that your dependency will only be used during compilation. Runtime only means your dependency will be used only on runtime. Implementation, it will be used both in compilation and runtime. We have API, which exposes dependency leaks, meaning that if a dependency is dependent on another, then you'll also have access to that dependent. We have similar for the test scenarios, so you could have test compilation only, test runtime only, test implementation, or test API. The most important aspect of dependency management is that transitive dependencies, these are the dependencies of your dependencies, are handled automatically by the build system. This means that if your project dependency, either full bar version 1.33, in itself depends on Buzz quiz version 42, you do not have to also include the dependency in your project. The Gradle build system will take care of such transitive dependencies and include them in the build itself. 
That was a lot of theoretical bits, and that's where we'll stop today. In our next episode, we will look at practical ways in which you can define Gradle tasks, plugins, properties, settings, and usage of the Gradle wrapper. See you in the next episode.